Today we're going to be talking about the differences between tune class and Bmax category. First up, we're going to call up the Dixon rules for tune class category. Tune class provides a race classification that allows younger racers to compete toe-to-toe -to -toe with older, more seasoned racers. The spirit of tune class is to provide a more level playing field between intermediate racers and advanced racers. If you choose to race in tune class, please keep in mind the spirit of tune class. In other words, if a younger racer, 16 years or younger, can't do what you're doing with your car, it's not in the spirit of tune class. Race officials have final say on what modifications are in the spirit of tune class. The chassis, you can use any chassis. No cutting of the chassis whatsoever. So what does that mean? You are not allowed to modify this body right here. This body is the body that you took right out of the kit. You're not allowed to sand it down. You're not allowed to cut anything off of it. It has to remain fully intact. So here, we see here, this is an open class car. So open class car, this would never pass in tune class because here we have a VS chassis and I took off the wings. I shaved off the wings, cut them off entirely and filed everything down. This would not be allowed in tune class because of that. I also shaved off various parts on the top and bottom. And yeah, this again would not be allowed in tune class. So then the next thing, we have the body. Any body type, plastic or polycarbonate. So tune class allows you to use this. It also allows you to use these plastic shell, these polycarbonate bodies in it. Now we'll later talk about BMAX class. BMAX does not allow you to use these polycarbonate bodies. What BMAX is trying to do is level the playing field even more so, so that beginning racers can come into the category and race fairly against more experienced racers. So beginning racers are not going to have access to polycarbonate bodies as easily as experienced racers will. So that's what they're trying to prevent. They're trying to make sure that everybody's got a fair shot at winning and not allow the experienced racers to just easily win every time. So body type, any body type, plastic or polycarbonate, there's no trimming to accommodate weights. Okay, so what that means is this is the body shell that came with this Razorback car, and I didn't do any modifications of this plastic body whatsoever to accommodate a wider weight than what I see here. So I had to work within these limitations here by placing these side, these side plates on here. I had to work within the limitations and find a weight that would fit and slide up and down easily on the sides of this car. Whereas on a car such as the mock frame, which has the very same chassis, FMA chassis, I can put wider weights on the sides and I have room to spare. If there ever was a super jumbo weight that was larger than this, I could attach it onto here as well. So pretty cool. So no major trimming allowed. Application of at least two decals are required. So you see here, I've got basically the minimal number of decals. Now, I don't really like decals. I believe that decals um, kind of take away from the finish, the finishing look of a car, except for maybe the Razorback. The Razorback is, is an anomaly because basically you've got these stickers that cover the entire body shell and it gives this like a nice metallic look without it being a metallic body. So that's the exception. There are some some cars that give you these really nice foil stickers, as you see here, and these are beautiful, but what they do is they add weight to your car. So you don't believe me, you can just find out for yourself. If you place your car on a scale, you'll see that the cars that have decals are usually a smidge more in weight than the cars that don't have decals, and every ounce counts when you're trying to win a car race. So I have minimal decals on my cars for that reason, and I only use basically paint to to make my cars look different. So paint also adds weight to a car. Don't think that it does not. The more layers of paint you place on a car, the heavier the car will be. Now it's going to be a smidge of extra weight, but it's still extra weight nonetheless. And if you're trying to win that car race based on all other factors being even, let's say everybody bought the same exact car as you, 10 different people bought the same exact car, the person who's going to win is the person who's going to build their car as best as possible and keep it as lightweight as possible, everything else being the same. So you wanna make sure that your cars are lightweight, fast, and built very, very carefully within the specs so that you can win the race. So next up, wheels. Any diameter, any material, piercing is okay, no modifying or cutting wheels. In the past, piercing wheels was not allowed. So as you see here, there's no hole right there where a shaft can go through. Whereas on here, I actually pierced the wheels and silly me, I'm actually still using 60 millimeter shafts on this, but they seem to work fine on this. There's no real problems because this is this has a wide offset. So here, the, the wheels are wider than usual. The usual wheels are very narrow, like you see here. Narrow wheels, 
if you were to drill this, your your um, if you were to pierce these wheels, your shaft would poke through on here. Whereas here, it just stays within the boundaries of of the wheel diameter. So pretty cool. So no modifying or cutting wheels. So what some people like to do is they like to modify the wheels, shave them a little bit to make the wheels more true so that they spin more accurately, and they try to balance the wheels that way, and that's not allowed in tune class, not at all. In open class, you can do that. You can do whatever you want to try to get your car to be as fast as possible, including modifying and cutting wheels and tires. So we'll get to tires in a moment. The stays. Okay, so the stays are these, these plates right here, this green black plate. So plastic, FRP, carbon, and aluminum stays are okay. No cutting, trimming, sanding, or modifying. Countersinking is okay. So as you see here, what I did was I bolted two plates together in typical BMAX fashion to make this a strong reinforced plate, and I have a method for making sure that your plates are glued appropriately together. Uh, so I'll talk about that in a future video. So countersinking, what is that? Countersinking is basically using a special drill bit to sink a hole in the plate so that you can use countersunk screws in there so that this is flat. So this being flat, you're not going to have the edges of the screws, the protruding screws, scraping against the bottom of the track when you're going up a, an incline. So that prevents that from happening. And in the past, countersinking was not allowed. The screws had to protrude, but because tracks were getting scratched up, they decided to add the new rule that countersinking is okay. And that just, that just allows, I think, the experienced racers to have a slight advantage because the beginning racers doing tune class, they're probably not going to know about countersinking. They probably won't want to do it for a little while too. So I feel that it's kind of like not okay <laughs> as, as a new rule change, but that's, that's just how it is. So countersinking affords you the ability to basically have a flat surface so that you can easily place a sponge break on top of it. So it's, it's pretty cool. This is, it's like a really cool thing. So this is an example of a non-countersunk screw. This is what the screw would look like. It's protruding out if it were not countersunk. And here is the countersunk screw. So some people opt to basically countersink everything and good for them if they want to do that. I typically feel that countersinking a screw when you're drilling a hole into the plate like that, you're actually weakening the strength of the plate. So that's one negative about countersinking. The good thing of course is it's flat on the surface. So you can do a lot, of, a lot with it. So that if you decide to go brakeless, you can pretty cool without scratching up anybody's track or scratching anybody's track too badly anyway, because there still is a little bit of residual protrusion right here. So next, tires. Any compound is okay. That means hard, super hard, regular, um, and also low friction tires. These maroon colored ones are low friction tires and low friction tires are great for cornering speed. Um, super hards are good for that too. Whereas the very jelly feeling tires, the normal tires are really good when it comes to gripping surface after a jump. So it, it's really interesting to see which cars can actually handle jumps very well. And it depends on many factors, but those grippy tires are actually very good coming off of jumps. So no tire shaving, which means you can't shave off the tire to make them smaller. No truing, shaving, or sanding of tires. No tire dressing or additives. That means you can't add any chemicals to your tire to either shrink them or change the surface tension of them, things like that. And cleaning is okay. So cleaning tires, what does that mean? It means taking like your little alcohol wipe and or non-alcohol wipe if you choose and placing it against the surface of the tire, turning on the car and allowing the alcohol wipe to wipe off in high speed all of the junk and the gook that's been accumulated on the tire as a result of heavy racing. So pretty cool. So the motor, torque tuned, rev tuned, or atomic tuned motors only. So those are the uh, orange, blue, or black bell motors that say torque tuned, rev tuned, or atomic tuned on them. No zen tuned motors. So that's an old antiquated motor anyway, and that's not allowed in any tuned class racing events. Mass dampers. So in the past, the rules were no body dampers, no hanging dampers, no setups where weights will hit the car body, and no mass dampers as rollers. So as you see here in this open class car, here we have body dampers, that this is a body damper right here, this flapper I call it, hanging dampers, that's these, these weights right here, um, no setups where the weights will hit the car body, so here this is a weight that will hit the car body if it goes up and down like this, and that means no tail dampers basically, and no mass dampers as rollers, so people were using these dampers as rollers on their cars, and uh, that's, that's illegal now, I guess too many people were winning with them, and now Dixon says we will now allow no cut body dampers, which means you can create using plates, something like a flapper like this, but using plates. 
So that's kind of unfair too, because a lot of experienced racers will be able to create these things, but beginning racers will not. So I feel that they should just not allow body dampers at all, but that's Dixon's choice. So the next one is gears. Bearings are okay in the original sized bearing holes. So bearings. There are two types of bearings. There are bearings that go into the wheel well of the car, and that enables you to attach these hex shafts. Hex shafts, these shafts that hold the tires are not round. They are hexagonal, and so they slide into the hex ball bearings that you place inside the wheel wells. There's also another type of bearing that's a round bearing, and the round bearing you use inside the gear. So what's a gear? The gear is that little cog-like device that's inside your car that determines the speed of your car. So here, we have a three to one gear ratio gear, and this is the hole that they're talking about where you can place a bearing inside, a round hole bearing. You can also use what's called a palm bearing, which is a plastic bearing. Now, the plastic bearings will allow you to go really fast. The metal bearings, if lubricated properly, cleaned and lubricated properly, will enable you to go a little bit faster, but there's more maintenance involved with a metal gear. So here is a 4.2 to 1 gear. It's slower, but it's going to be much faster around turns. Pretty cool. So with this one, as you see, it's got a different size hole on the inside. So you're not going to be able to use the same round hole bearings here as you would here. In fact, what they're talking about here is bearings okay in original size bearing holes. You're not allowed to cut the inside there to accommodate a bearing, a round hole bearing that would fit in here, in here. So no floating gears. What's that? A floating gear is what happens when you shave off the edges, the inside and the outside edges of your, of your gear so that it will have less potential friction when it hits the side of your chassis. So what some smart people have thought about was, hey, this thing keeps hitting the sides of the chassis when it's squared like this. And so they decided to shave off the edges so that it would have less potential chance of hitting the sides of the chassis. And so it ends up being faster than 3.5 to 1. Fluorine shafts, okay. So a fluorine shaft is a must. Everybody should purchase fluorine shafts and use fluorine shafts in their cars if possible. They are relatively inexpensive and possibly one of the best upgrades for your car. So these fluorine coated gear shafts are darker in color than their typical gear shafts that you get in the kits. And they are coated with a special chemical thing that allows for much more slip when the gear is turning around to them. Hardware, any Tamiya hardware. So that's any parts that you purchase from Tamiya for the mini four-wheel drive line. Screws in front and rear of chassis are required to be countersunk or hidden. So again, that's a relatively newer rule in which they want you to countersink your screws on the plates to prevent track damage. So that's what really that's all about. Stabilizers. Off-the-shelf stabilizers are okay. So this would be considered an off-the-shelf stabilizer. You purchase them in a little package for about $1.90 or so, and you get six of them. Unmodified crown gears are okay. So these are your crown gears. They don't want you to shave them. Roller stabilizers is okay. So here we have rollers as the stabilizers. They're in the top part of the roller mount. So they also act as stabilizers. No wheels as stabilizers. So in the past, what a number of racers would do is use wheels actual wheels as stabilizers on the top of their roller mounts and that worked out well for some racers and now it's not allowed no weights as stabilizers so you're not allowed to use these damper weights as stabilizers on the top so the final rules are rubber tubing or plastic balls must be used to cover any protruding screw threads so the screw threads that jut out the logic there is you don't want if somebody's catching your car you don't want them to be hurt when they catch your car so here any protruding screws have this, these little rubber tubing things attached to them, or you can use these balls, these stabilizer balls on the top. So here, I need to add a rubber tube on top of this, otherwise I'd be disqualified because that's just not allowed. You can, somebody can possibly get hurt by catching your car and scratching themselves with this. The rubber tubing may not be used for anything other than covering excess threads. So here I'm using the rubber tubing to cover the threads that are sticking out. If I didn't want to use rubber tubing, I can use ball stabilizers or some other form of stabilizer to prevent this protruding screw from, from just being bare like that. Because if somebody catches this without any of this stuff attached to it, they might scratch their hand and might get hurt. 
car catcher material is now allowed. So interesting that they allow car catcher material now because car catcher material is used in tail dampers. Now, you're not allowed to use this on Tune Class. However, what they're saying here is some people actually use car catcher material on the bottom of their cars, and that's basically like a brake that you can use. You can also create what's called a dragon tail, which is my special invention that I invented not long ago, which is like a variable brake. So it's a triangular brake, and it has sponge material such that the deeper the incline, the more contact surface will hit the surface of the incline, slowing down your car. Polycarbonate material can be used for anything. So, another very interesting rule a change that is like, um, it's questionable to me because what are they going to be using polycarbonate material for other than things like maybe tail dampers or, or maybe, maybe it's to create more slip on things. I, I don't know. So that's a very interesting rule in itself. Now let's move on to BMAX class. BMAX class was designed to further the idea of fair racing between beginners and experienced racers. So, according to the BMAX Regulation Executive Committee, they say, in addition to the official Tamiya Mini Four Wheel Drive Competition regulations, the following BMAX GP specific restrictions are in effect. So, first one is the bodies. Only plastic bodies may be used and no polycarbonate allowed, so none of these plastic shells. Original mounting points and mounting style must be used, front and rear. So you're not allowed to have your own special personalized body dampers at all. So any of those crazy um, like rear dampening systems, rear body dampening systems that you've created, they're basically out. Original mounting points and mounting style must be used, front and rear. What that really means is any kinds of original rear body dampening systems, uh, that's out. You're not allowed to use body dampening systems, period. Only contacting points may be trimmed if using a body on a different chassis to ensure a proper fit. All that means is, let's say you want to use this body shell on, a, on some other chassis other than FMA, you're allowed to do little bits of shaving here and there to allow the body shell to fit onto that other chassis. So where that comes into play would be, let's say you're placing a sliding damper up front. You want to be able to fit your body shell on it, and sometimes the nose is a little too big, so you can shave off the nose a little bit to accommodate the chassis and the sliding damper up front. To be able to seat an animal character, the canopy portion of the body may be removed. Animal must be installed. So that means there has to be a cockpit that's open so you can put your animal in and mount it appropriately. Now, if your animal flies off during the race, you're disqualified. So you wanna make sure that you mount the animal appropriately in the car. So you see here, this animal racer, the bear is basically adhered to the battery catch. So it's adhered with double-sided tape that they include in the kit. So that's how it prevents it from flying off. Of course, over time, as you race this car more and more and you happen to have an animal flying off, you have to just make sure that your animal is securely in place. Only standard Tamiya regulation chassis may be used. And what that really means is we just want to make sure that everything is kept Tamiya. So anything that's like by Aldi or some other competing Tamiya brand, we don't use that in our cars. Any modifications except the following are prohibited. A, roller hole expansion, maximum two millimeters. Transmission, VS, example, VS gear cover adjustments using Tamiya multi-purpose tape, Tamiya brake sponges, Tamiya washers, and or super glue. This means no shoe glue. Okay, so the transmission. VS chassis are known to have issues with these covers flying off. So one way of keeping them down is to secure a little bit of sponge tape underneath the latches and maybe inside to make sure that they are firmly in place. I'm fortunate here because I've got this reinforced chassis and I don't seem to experience that effect. But if I had a traditional VS chassis made of ABS plastic, this gear cover would be popping off every now and again, especially after a jump. But this is an open class vehicle, so there's, this is going to handle a lot of jumps very well. However, even when this lands, there's a lot of force on the car. So one day, this will weaken so much that I think the gear cover is gonna come off eventually and it'll have to reinforce with sponge. But if you're doing tune class and you're using ABS chassis, then you wanna make sure those sponge reinforcements are in place. Mass dampers. Mass damper weights must be an original official intended mounting positions. Side mass dampers are allowed. Any side mass damper stay may be used in original unmodified condition. Only countersinking is allowed to prevent track damage. This means no shaving the carbon stays at all. For example, something like this where I had a popsicle stick and I shaved off the ends. 
to be able to accommodate this movement. That's not allowed in tune class. This is an open class car, so it's allowed in open class, but not in tune class. No lantern dampers allowed, period. So nothing like this. This is what's called a body damper or a lantern damper or what I call a flapper. That's not allowed. Even Dixon's rules where they allow body dampers, not allowed in BMAX class. Mass damper weights may not be modified. Some people might like the idea of shaving off some of their mass damper weight to make them a little bit lighter. They want to get super precise. That's not allowed. Tohoku dampers and catcher dampers, guillotine dampers are prohibited. Only original ball link dampers are allowed. Okay, a ball link damper is basically like this. Here's the weight on the, the damper itself, and these things right here, they're attached to these screws with steel balls in the end of them. So this clamps over the ball, just like so, and this weight goes up and down on it. So there's two of these holding either side of this thing, and this is, it's technically a guillotine. Let's, let's not try to hide the fact that it's a guillotine, but they're saying right here that guillotines are not allowed, so technically this shouldn't be allowed either, but they're allowing it. Why? Because it's a Tamiya official thing that you can purchase from a package. So that's the thinking there. Because like any any average user can buy this and install it, that's allowed. Tires and wheels. Any standard wheel size tire compound may be used. Tire size must match wheels, medium to medium, large to large. No modifications to the tire size characteristics are allowed, including but not limited to using parts cleaner, zippo, fluid, etc. Wheel piercing and the use of double-sided tape to mount tires is allowed. Aluminum wheels that have CNC's for design are allowed. Bumpers, systems, and brakes. Sliding dampers may only be attached if unmodified and can be attached without any other modifications, such as no body trimming to allow sliding dampers to clear. So if you have a sliding damper up front, you are not allowed to shave off this little nose here to be able to fit the sliding damper. Modifications to plates and stays are limited to countersinking to prevent track damage and superglue and reinforcement. All stays must be mounted. So, these two plates here have been bolted together using superglue to reinforce them. All stays must be mounted in a secure fashion, and that's using lock nuts and short threads. Only standard brake pads are allowed, catcher brakes are allowed, catcher underguards are allowed. So standard brake pads, that's what these are. You can also cover them up with tape. You can also use car catcher material. So that's basically a break for some people. Make no mistake though, a lot of these rules have been taken from ideas that were in open class and they just moved them over to this so-called BMAX category. In a sense, it's a little unfair because now we have experienced racers trying to alter the rules here so that they can win in the BMAX category. That's what I sincerely feel. So. If they really wanted to make everything super fair, they would just try to not allow all these weird, freaky things on cars and just allow cars that are built like with just adding parts to them rather than saying, hey, we're now allowing this, we're now allowing that material, and, and you can do kind of what you want, but you have to kind of follow those rules. Like that's, it's restrictive, but not restrictive in a sense, because you're allowing these outlier rules to kind of creep in there. Outlier rules that were probably taken from open class and, and these experts, they just shifted them in there so that they can win the races. Not cool. So rollers, roller count is unlimited. Rollers anodized, CNC'd for design and or having diameter changes are allowed provided the changes will not damage the track or injure other racers. So no edge sharpening allowed. O-ring rollers must use O-rings. Now some racers out there remove the rubber O-ring and race their cars without them. Why do they do this? because their cars will end up being much faster. There's very little resistance when there's no metal right there across the surface between these two discs. So if you're using a rubber roller ring, you have to have the rubber O-ring on it. The track contact material must remain original. Rubber ring cannot convert to plastic ring. Motors, batteries, other. Screws may be cut to length as may shafts that protrude from pierced wheels. Any protruding screw or shaft must have a nut or rubber tube attached to prevent injury. So what they're saying here is, you see how that screw protrudes a little bit beyond the lock nut? I have the option of covering it with rubber tubing, or I could cut this end right off to make it flush. Battery holders must be from the original chassis, no swapping. No parts from a disassembled motor 
may be used. No motor shafts, motor spacers, etc. Batteries must be installed in the direction intended for the chassis. So no FMAR. So what people have been doing in certain races is changing the way the car behaves. So they would take an AR chassis, for example, and totally reverse the mechanics of it so that the batteries would be flipped and they would run the car in a reverse way. So instead of going from instead of going forward, the car actually goes forward in the opposite direction. So what this ends up happening is you have the motor instead of in the rear, it's in the front. And so there's front heaviness and you're really taking advantage of the characteristics of the chassis that you're using, but you're reversing it so that you take advantage of the characteristics of the weight up front. General, the use of polycarbonate body remnants, runners, carbon remnants, FRP remnants is prohibited. No polycarbonate bodies. The event marshals have final say in any and all regulatory disputes. Please be aware that this may lead to differences between events. Current standard to me regulations limits are enforced. No ultra jet or plasma dash motors. No antique motors. So black bell hyper dash motors, not allowed. Zen tuned motors, not allowed. Those super fast motors that are not dash motors, not allowed. So hyper dash, if you just use a hyper dash motor, you're pretty much set. So you can remember you can tune hyper dash motors the way you'd like. And so you can have a whole plethora a whole army of hyperdash motors that at your disposal so that you can use them for different purposes. So that's it. Tune class versus BMAX. In another video, I'll be describing how I built my BMAX racers. If you like this video, please slam the like button, subscribe to my channel. You'll see more videos just like this one. Until next time, everybody, see you. Bye.